Right there, leave it there, leave it there. Just, I, I'm on the horn. Uh, and because we really want yeah, to Here I come. <laughs> oh. So that's you? No, no right. Oh. Right here. Oh, oh, there it goes. Really? Yeah, that was me. That's your car? That's my car. So tell me, um, what, uh, what inspired you to take time? First of all, how did you get, how did you get tickets? Uh, I was basically calling up the campaign and, and people I knew and, and trying to get them to get in there. And, uh, fortunately, I was, uh, gifted two tickets and, um, I totally enjoyed it. It was awesome. It was, uh, it was my, uh, you know, so many, for so many years, I'm, I'm the guy in the arena. And now I got to sit in the stands and watch a totally different field, a totally different competition. And it was really cool. I enjoyed it a lot. Is it your first time to see Ron Paul in person? Yes, it is. It's my first time in person. I've spoken to him over the phone. He had called me during the season uh, to say his appreciation for uh, my support. Uh, vo uh, as vocal as I was during the season, as well as, uh, you know, I supported his campaign, his money bombs. And uh, he called me and said he was appreciative. At first I thought it was one of the many jokesters we have on our team calling me and uh, faking it, but uh, it turned out to be uh, the real guy and I was excited. Yeah, so uh, did, wh where were you sitting at? We sat in the back. They put uh, the Ron Paul guys, we were in the back left corner, which, um, it wasn't a bad thing because uh, you're in the, you're in his eyesight, so he could see us and uh, he acknowledged us and, and he could tell our support from back there. But I think as the debate was going on, you could tell who was for the different candidates. Where I think he was gaining more while he was in there because more people around us started cheering for what he was saying than it, than just me and a few other guys. Yeah. What, uh, when did you first learn about Ron Paul and how, how did that transpire? Um, I probably first started stumbling on, on uh, really getting into it uh, right after the last campaign. I, uh, I started really listening, you know, I was like, well, what's he talking about? What is this? What is this Federal Reserve? What is this IRS? How could somebody eliminate the IRS? How could somebody eliminate the Federal Reserve? What's he talking about? So then I started doing my own research and I was like, oh my God, he's right. And uh, now I'm researching him even more for the past 20 years. He hasn't changed. Nobody in these debates says, well, Ron, you said this back then and now you changed. That doesn't happen with him. He's the same guy and, and it's nothing about him really. It's our constitution which he values. The same reason so many people on this planet look up to us. He, it's not optional to him. It's not just out of convenience he's applying it. He's applying it throughout his career, day in, day out. Not just whenever he feels like or whenever people are watching. So I think that's something that uh, is inspiring to me and, and, and something that I'm willing to put my vote behind. This is a guy that when you go into communities amongst your family, um, your friends, and, and you hear the complaints about politicians and 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 uh, and what's going wrong with this country and who you wish you would have and how they would act, he's the guy. He's the guy, an honest guy that tells you how it is. He gives you your opinion, and he's going by the Constitution, whether you like it or not. That's America is our Constitution, and. He gets hammered so many times. Everybody, everywhere I go, they want to say, I love everything he says except his foreign policy. And I say all the time, I say, he's not against going after our enemies. He's for constitutional war, constitutional policy. Declare it. Even when I spoke to him on, on the phone, I said, Dr. Paul, tell me one thing. I mean, I don't know. I'm a football player. I've never been in the military. I watch a ton of military movies, read a ton of military books. I'm under the assumption that we have the best, most advanced, powerful military in the face of the earth. And when we're motivated and we declare missions through the Constitution, we could pretty much take care of everybody within a month or so. I mean, we got, and you see stories all the time about our special forces guys going in, executing, coming back. Our, our, when, when we're motivated, we go in, we get the job, then we're out. 
I was like, so are you saying that we can go get our enemies as long as we declare it, vote on it, and declare the mission and get them and get out? He's like, absolutely. You can constitutionally go after your enemies. And, and when you do that, you're in the right. When you don't, then there's a lot of gray area. And what happens is lives, you lose lives and you lose money and you lose a lot of hope. And, uh, and you, if you just stick by the rules of the game, which were set up for us to follow, you'll be all right. What have you seen from, say, so your background, I mean, you, you played football for years. I played what football. I, I, uh, I grew up, uh, my father's an immigrant. My parents are both immigrants. Um, they came here for a reason. They came here because this is the greatest country on earth. And, and because they chased that American dream to achieve more than what they could ever have in their own countries. And, and for the most part, my father achieved that. He didn't rewrite the book or reinvent the wheel. He got a job as a factory worker in a steel factory. He saved his money and he raised his children. And the funny thing is, is that I grew up in a household where my parents are laborers and factory workers and, and they're told that they should vote Democrat because they support the worker. So then I go to college and I leave a Democratic household and I go to college and I, and I become employed, and I'm a Republican. And then as I'm a Republican, I'm like, well, that's not what it was supposed to be. And I don't want to be back to being a Democrat. And I think that goes along the lines of how I stumbled into a true Republican in Ron Paul, because he really is. And, and unfortunately, right now, I think both our parties act the same. I mean, we, you know, I voted for President Bush, so I, I feel like I could critique him and say, you know, he started the bailout business. And wow, this is a conservative who started that. Conservatives are supposed to be small government, not bailouts. And there we go, we did that. And then this president does bailouts and increases troops. So both parties are acting the same, but there's one guy who's staying by the definition and who has for many years. When I go around talking about Rob Paul and, and, and who he is and, and, um, and how good he is for this country, you hear that from people like Tony Never. Um, they don't even talk about them. They, you know, I don't see. Yeah, right. Well, and I, my response to that is, after all of that, whether it's asking him questions that are loaded in debates, trapping him, not giving him the airtime he deserves, he's winning straw polls, and you know, we don't even talk about it. Um, we don't give them the same credit, you know, and, and, and maybe I'm a little bit more judgmental because I'm biased, you know, I'm supporting Ron Paul, but after all that, he's still a significant candidate who's improving and who's gaining and he's still in the race and he's going to stay in it for the long haul. So even after all that, he's going to have to be a force to be reckoned with here sooner or later. And uh, then people are going to have to acknowledge him and listen and hear out. And then it will be come, come down to the people whether they want him or not, not outside sources or influences. Click here to donate to support efforts to elect Ron Paul to the White House.